Hello there, Tutophiles. Let's get some introductions out of the way, shall we? My name's Mike. I'm originally from here in Pennsylvania. Uh, then I lived here in Hokkaido, Japan. Then I moved here to Montana in the United States. And now I live here in far north Queensland, Australia, uh, where I live in the middle of a World Heritage Rainforest and life is awesome. As the student affairs manager for the School for Field Studies War Wee Center for Rainforest Studies, students here mostly see me as part-time driver, on-call first responder and risk manager, and full-time rambler about international politics and electoral systems. One other thing before we start. I'm a human. Hello, humans. As a human, I have a lot of things that most robots don't, like fast twist muscle tissue, overwhelming anxieties and guilt complexes, and political biases. Sure, by some standards, I'm knowledgeable enough on this topic to convey in brief this information to you, but I may make mistakes. Talking about politics is challenging, but it's the key to becoming an informed citizen, and I hope I can help you understand this system without getting bogged down in too much controversy. So let's jump in. At the beautiful and fabulous Gettysburg College, I mostly studied environmental policy and comparative electoral systems. And when it comes to being an American understanding German elections, there are two primary differences to understand, political structure and electoral systems. Political structure describes the way that governments are formed, who fills what roles in that government, and how do those roles and institutions relate to one another. Electoral systems describe the way that the people decide who will fit into any role in the government that's elected, as opposed to appointed positions. Once those elected officials are decided on, they enter into their respective political positions and influence the rest of the system. Let's start with something familiar, the good old U.S. of A. This is our political structure. It can be described as a three-branch presidential federal system with a directly elected head of executive, uh, elected bicameral legislature, and an appointed federal judiciary. It describes the three constitutionally defined branches of government, how it's decided who will fill each role in that government, and how the smaller parts of that government relate to one another. You've got questions, right? Which branch of government decides uh, the constitutionality of laws, Mike? Ah, see, that's political structure. What can and can't the president do? Political structure. To whom does the chief of staff of the Navy or the head of the Environmental Protection Agency report? Political structure. The federal government has one political structure, which also tells it how it relates to its direct sub-federal entities, the states, territories, tribal authorities, and district that sit directly below the federal government. Those entities will each have their own, sometimes radically different, political structures. This is a map of our electoral system. How elections work, who can vote, how you vote, and whom you vote for, and in what way, how often we vote, how the votes of millions of individuals are translated into representatives on state, local, and federal levels are all part of electoral systems. Even things you might think are obvious, for instance, how many votes does each person get, are negotiable parts of the democratic social contract that is an electoral system. Now that we've clarified a little bit of language so that we can speak precisely about the topic at hand, let's get on to the important bit, Germany. So now we'll be speaking only of the federal system. So if you're curious about how elections specifically work in Bavaria or something, well, you know, Google it. The first thing to understand is the difference between presidential and parliamentary systems of representative democracy. The Pre presidential system involves the direct election of the head of government by the population. The United States works, for the most part, like this. Presidential candidates campaign primarily for themselves to gain your vote for them as an individual. The Electoral College makes this more of a pseudo-direct election, wherein your individual vote for a presidential candidate enters into a variably binding disproportionality-creating black box, which then spits out secondary votes for president that actually count. But basically, this is how it works. You vote for the president, separate from your own vote for your legislature. Presidential candidates don't have to have representation in your local system in order to run for president. And presidents don't even technically have to be attached to a party to become president. Although only one guy has ever managed to pull that off. A parliamentary system is different in that it creates an executive branch essentially subservient to the legislative branch. Individuals, mostly charismatic heads of parties, still campaign for vote but no German citizen has ever voted for Angela Merkel as chancellor. No German citizen in modern political age has ever voted for chancellor. Germans vote for their representatives, and the representatives decide who will be chancellor. Leading German politicians campaign for you to vote for their party, not necessarily for them. So let's talk about the legislature. Germany's legislative branch is bicameral, meaning two parts, like the U.S., but unlike the U.S., the government doesn't officially designate one as upper and one as lower. 
Often the Bundesrat is seen as the upper and the Bundestag seen as the lower, simply by similarity of numbers and representative structure to other systems, but this is informal. The Bundestag can be seen as an analog to the U.S. House of Representatives. Similar to the House of Representatives, members of the Bundestag are elected by their people of their constituency. The members are voted for directly by the people. Half of them are elected directly to represent a constituency, and the other half are added members who will enter the system pro to proportionally represent the will of the people, but will not directly represent any specific region of the country. What's important about this body is that it's elected directly by the people of Germany on the federal level. The Bundesrat can be seen as analogous to the U.S. Senate in that it's the other half of a bicameral legislature, which together with the Bundestag considers laws and runs the government. It's very different in its structure and appointment, though. Let's take a look at the diagram again. The red lines on the U.S. side indicate direct input from the people. Votes. We vote for senators, we vote for representatives, we vote for president, and we vote for state government positions. The important thing to note is that none of these votes influences any of the others. I can vote for a Democrat for president, a Republican for Senate, a Green for the House, and a member of the rent is too dang high party in my state for the election if I want. Another important thing to note is the disconnect between state and federal government. While parties, individuals, and money often allow an amount of influence between state and federal government in both directions, there is no formal manner of influence between the two. Constitutionally speaking, the realm of national governments is solely that of the federal government in the United States, with no input from the state government, and all duties not given to the federal government are then in the realm of state government. Those two things are not necessarily the case in Germany, though. Let's look at the German governance map. As you can see, the same bodies exist but the arrows are all shifted around. German citizens vote for the Bundestag and in their state elections, just like in the United States. Their head of government, the chancellor though, is not elected by the people, unlike the United States president. This position is appointed by the Bundestag. This is to say that the people who are elected to the Bundestag will all come together to decide who the chancellor should be. If one party has a majority of seats in the Bundestag, then they can easily just get together and choose the head of their party to run the government. But if there is no party with a clear majority, a coalition must be formed, haggling must be had, and decisions must be made. We'll talk more about coalitions a little bit later. Another thing to note is that the upper house, the Bundeskat, is appointed by state governments. Each state gets a number of votes in the Bundeskat regressively proportional to their population, which is to say each additional number of citizens in the state gains them less additional Bundeskat votes than an equal number of citizens gained before. This is to temper the power uh, that would be gained by a highly populous state without giving wildly disproportional power to small rural states. Think of it as a middle ground between the American extremes a cl and as close to possible proportional representation, such as the U.S. House of Representatives, hands huge power to states like California and Texas. But an equal member system like that of the United States Senate basically says that the mostly empty patch of mountains and bison that is Montana is equal importance to the California, the world's seventh largest economy. The Bundeskat strikes a middle ground. Finally, there's the head of state. In the United States, the president serves as both head of government and head of state. So we're unfamiliar with the division between the two in our country. A conversation about the differences between heads of state and heads of government in various governmental systems is really challenging. For instance, in Great Britain, the prime minister is the head of government with the queen as head of state. And here in Australia, the prime minister is the head of government and the head of state is that same queen of that other country, Great Britain, an island to oceans away, thousands of kilometers vaguely in that direction. It's a little bit strange. Suffice to say that these roles are filled separately in Germany, and the president's roles are primarily in matters of ceremony, representation, international law, and official diplomacy. The directly elected Bundestag and the parliaments of the various states come together in a federal convention to elect this position for a five-year term, once again blurring the definitions between state and federal power. This means that Germans cast half as many votes for the same number of bodies to represent them. All of these bodies are still responsible to the citizens, but in a different way and in a sometimes less direct manner. 
Some benefits of this system are that it allows for a larger number of parties with a larger variety of opinions and more meaningful debate in the opinions of some. This allows for people to feel less disenfranchised in countries with these systems and to feel more involved if they hold a political opinion not directly represented by one of two large parties. It also decreases the effect called the spoiler effect. If you would like information on how these electoral systems determine how much your vote does or doesn't count, I recommend a series about electoral systems around the world by CGP Gray. He goes into the math, and it's really interesting. We unfortunately don't have the time for it here. Another important thing about this system is that it gives state politics a direct role in federal government. Because the state government can change who exercises their votes in the Bundesgott at any time, infighting and political discord in one single state during a state election might shift the balance of the Bundesgott, and therefore the direction of national government, months and sometimes even years before the rest of the nation gets a chance to weigh in again. When it comes to politics in Germany, this ain't Vegas. What happens in Baden-Württemberg does not stay in Baden-Württemberg. Now that you have a basic understanding of political structure in Germany and what bodies do what, we'll talk about the elections themselves. There's already a great video about this, so I'll defer to Mrs. Clemens and that video to answer your question, and you'll watch that video before I return in a bit to talk about coalition politics and parliamentary democracies and the specific ideologies of the various German parties. Tschüss!